And I'll start and welcome to Story My name is Chad Parento. For those of you who are coming here for the first time, you are in for a uh, quite a treat. And some of you probably know that because you probably heard this person perform before, as have many of uh, Stone Soup's regulars and semi-regulars. Um, this person came to us very early in our online uh, format. We uh, started around April, May. Uh, we re things really took off after we gathered in May for Stone Soup's 49th anniversary. Stone Soup was first founded back in 1971 by Jack Powers in uh, Boston, Mass on Beacon Hill, uh, where we've gone back to from time to time again. Until the pandemic clears up and things are sane again, we are uh, meeting online and we're taking advantage of uh, the format to get in touch with people that we haven't gotten in touch with for a very long time. This is very exciting for us and we're also doing uh, phone connections because some of our older members do not have access to uh, high-speed internet or even computers and you'll hear a couple of them as well in the open mic. Tonight we'll do things a little bit different and we're going to have um, our feature poet, Mr. Phil, Phil Curtis, aka Midnight Perform. And we have so many people here excited for this and we're going to uh, start with this and then we'll have the open mic for anyone who's interested afterwards. So for those of you who are wondering, who is this guy? Well, I was wondering the same thing when he came on uh, so many months ago and just said, hey, I found Stone Soup randomly looking online. Can I, uh, can I be part of the open mic? And of course I said, yes, you may. And since then I've been trying to fit in a time to get him to perform. We came close a couple of times before election day, but now we have, now election day is over. Everyone's a little more sane or slightly saner, maybe a little, a little bit, but um, more importantly, Philip had time. So I'm going to read uh, his boilerplate, his bio boilerplate, which is uh, one of my favorite things to do. And then we're going to introduce him and keep your phones on mute until it's time for you to read on the open mic. I can unmute you all I want, but I cannot unmute people. So uh, you have to do that by either being on the phone and pressing star six or just clicking on if you're using an iPad or a laptop or what have you. So again, thank you very much. And uh, if you're interested in reading on the open mic, just text me via the chat and we'll go from there. Now, writer spoken word, Artist and mentor, Philip J. Curtis, is a native of New York with roots in Jamaica, Plain, Jamaica West Indies, who arrived on the Colorado Springs poetry scene in 2006, bringing with him a band, brand of New York City straightforwardness and swag, along with the sensual son of Jamaica West Indies. Mr. Curtis established lovesaverb.com in 2007, combining his love for music with his poetic flow. The man who calls himself Midnight is also an avid community steward. He has facilitated poetry workshops at various high schools and colleges, and he has supported nonprofit organizations such as lifewithoutlupos.org, <coughs> Tessa, Finding Our Voices, Casa, and Art from Ashes. He's a founding member of Hear Hear Poetry, and in 2009, he established 719 on Facebook to foster and support the freedom of self-expression in spoken and written word through community connections, education, and poetic unity for all ages. Ladies and gentlemen, before I bring him on, I want to remind you that uh, we do try and pay the Stone Soup, or the Stone Soup features uh, as, as best we can. I'm going to be asking Philip after the show to provide either his Venmo or his PayPal information. If everyone could make a small donation for, for him, it's a small token of our appreciation and a small token of our gratitude for having met him. One of the pluses of this crazy uh, Zoom world, aside from the trolls, is the uh, fact that we're meeting a lot of people that we wouldn't have met otherwise. Uh, there are people in my life now and on my Facebook that I interact with regularly that are stuck in my world and doing the meet. I would never met these people. And uh, Midnight is one of them. So. Put your hands, unmute yourselves if you must, and put your hands together 20, 30 times for Phil, AKA Midnight. Mic check, microphone check, one, two. Mic check, microphone check, one. What if, what if you were eyewitness to history born in the 18th century into this tight fit black skin onesie Booked on a sailing ship without a Royal Caribbean affiliate, a trip that offered complimentary beatings for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, chained neck to ankle, food rations into small portions, feces and urine for you to sleep in. 
Have I captured your attention? Welcome, welcome to America, land of the free. As long as you don't have skin like me, where a grown man is still put on an auction block and call a boy, and his wife, his wife is pushing and breathing, breathing and pushing until out comes a child that isn't his. Master's green-eyed son that's raised in the main house by a white woman by the name of Liz. What if you were like me? Born in the 1960s, where signs on girls still said white only, and peaceful protests sparked movements, and black folks, black folks was arrested for disturbing the peace simply because they wanted to buy something to eat. But could be forced to fight for country yet for the right for to fight for equal rights in their own was still incomplete. Since many believe that we could only be good at picking up after others and sports. But could it be a possibility that I could run further and faster than you because bloody Sunday dogs and fire hose will let loose? What if you put my face over your face, place my skin over yours? Could you live the life that my forefathers did? What if you were like Kerry, born in the year 1980, Houston, where birth certificate reads under race, Negroid. Houston, we have a problem. But I have a question. Would you choose to live as a black man to the age of 100 or as a Caucasian to the age of 50? What if you were the parents of Trayvon Martin, Eric Garner, John Crawford, or Sandra Bland, where those that murdered him was given pardon? What if all lives mattered way back when, with Kunta Kinte and them, the same way they try to convince us that all lives matter today? Then again, maybe all lives do matter when black lives are excluded. What if, what if, what if? How y'all doing? I don't mind the noise, baby. Mm. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Hey, I like haikus. I like haikus, so I'm gonna do some haiku and say the haikus later on. But this um came to my mind real quick. Dear le legislators and all your background states, tell them it's over. As I flip to the pages of these photographs. There's a question I ask. Phil, do you have any children? If I do with who? Because I don't remember holding your mother's hand, showing off her the beautiful side of beauty, reading and discussing everything from birth to age two, back and forth on how we came to the name that we call you, chuckling at the cute and innocent things that you do, running late, light, late, late night errands, satisfying mommy to be cravings. Pizza, M&Ms, and Pepsi product was your friend. And I have no clue less than a memory of what a parent would always remember. Because my recollection of first seeing you, you're already walking, big words talking, was that question again. Phil, do you have any children? I have a history with Lakia, someone that isn't kin to me, doesn't bear my last name, her certain characteristics, I'm not sure if I could even claim. But I held her hand, took her to school, good and bad ways to discipline too, taught her how to drive and what signs in life to look out for. I was the adult male in her life. Now, before her mother and I divorced, her biological started to come around, but not before I met him and gave my approval. That's what a father would do. And the first words he said to me were, I want to thank you for raising my daughter, since that was what he was entitled to call her. There's that question again. Phil, 
Do you have any children? I have what could mathematically be a daughter and three grandkids, two boys and a girl that call and keep in contact with me. Daddy, grandpa, how you be? And when she said she was going to marry, she asked that I'd be there to share that once in a lifetime memory. I took pictures of her in her white dress, pictures that she'd share and reminisce. She had the only daddy-daughter dance that looked like this. Onlookers would question, who was that and who was he? That would be her father. And he, meaning me, that's her father figure. But there's that question again. Phil, do you have any children? I think I, gotta, I, gotta, I need a bigger chair or get taller, and it's too late to get taller. Crap. My mother birthed me, died before I was age one. I have no nickname. Haiku. Flick dime at homeless. Vet says, please keep your money. All I want is change. Haiku three. Slaves, Black Lives Mattered. Slavery abolished. Now all lives matter? Critical parent. Child will always love you, but no longer love self. A job or career. Work will work your fucking nerves, paycheck to paycheck. Four friends, dealing with the absurdities of living in New York City without one brown or black person in the vicinity. Seinfeld, the show about nothing. But I know you're here, here to hear something, but this too will be a poem about nothing. Just me tripling the length of a minute, taking the news and review, sharing my point of view. They said it's a possibility that white, that white folks will become the minority by the year 2043. Ring the alarm. Caucasians are already up in arms. But could it be a possibility that they're a little leery about this probability because throughout history, minorities have been treated rather differently. Mic check. If Facebook were a country with a war more than 1.3 billion logging in monthly, it would be the third largest overpopulation, which reminds me of government subsidized housing. From Brooklyn to the BX, we call on the projects where rats are as big as cats, homeless in hallways if only the litter were edible and drug deals. Drug deals flow steadier than running water as slumlords collect rent as repairs fall on deaf ears. Crown Gardens, Promise Towers, Ocean Hill and Brownsville, all the way up to Riverdale and Kingsbridge. Complexes camouflage with pretty building names. Streets that have little people that look like kids too small to be grown, but grown from the things exposed. Because in the inner city, bullets are sometimes an endless melody. Loved ones waiting for an ambulance to arrive in an area where there's no chance for survival. As paramedics instantly become undertakers and bloodstains remain on concrete cement. Question of how Al and Boo Boo be? The response becomes a eulogy as black mother's tears maintain green grass and graveyards. Mic check. Dreamt. The only English words that ends with the letter M-T. Daily beloved, we are gathered here to join this man and woman in only matrimony. Stop, pause, 10 hours prior, 50 shots fired. His fiance with a newborn dreamt of lifelong celebrations not painful memories of another black man gunned down by the age of 23. 
There seems to be no justice when it's just us. When a juror can be heard asking, what is all the ruckus over crackheaded niggas? Five officers acquitted as if what they did was nothing. Police call on black folks trying to enjoy everyday living while Becky and Karen justify their actions. Since the White House has become a sanctuary of racism where folks, folks speak out publicly. Four friends dealing with the absurdities of living in New York City without a brown or black person in the vicinity. Seinfeld, the show about nothing. Again, I know you came here to hear something, but this, this was just a poem about nothing. How y'all doing? Y'all good? Y'all good? I can't hear you! No! I no, 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 no. Good. I just need water. That's okay. all. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Woo! Woo! Let's play with some haikus again. Yes. Listen carefully. Count if you like. <laughs> Chemotherapy. Pregnant friend or elderly. Mask. New golden rule. Bloodshed. Race, bigots, when was America great? A hated country. Haiku, him, his supporters, stand back and stand by. I say, skip to the jail part. Haiku, no more orange guy. Back to normal racism. We shall overcome. Uh, Chad, how much time I got? Let me know I got time. Keep going, sir. Keep going. Keep going. I hear that. Oh, shucks. Spit some more. Spit some more. Spit some more. Dating. Dating. It's like shopping on a clearance rack, sorting through, finding something that looks good, but you know that no longer looks good on you. While some clothes capture attention, you realize you don't need a sweater in June. It's just those glaring defects of past relationships, stains and blemishes on material you already donated. That outfit that you held onto even when the fabric was long outdated. Me, I would be searching for something close to brand new. Hello, how do you do? Prelude of that I would like to get to know you, that type of interview. See, I'm attracted to your, your physical. That smile doesn't show off itself through, but dares me to approach to your appeal. The temptation of her curves, full lips, and thickness. I was looking forward. Two people spending time, hoping to be lost in an opportune time, getting to know you from the bowling, from a bowling alley. Interaction with the action of high fives after a strike or two. Breaking the barrier to touch. Tempted to kiss. I was looking forward. Placing a friendly wager to tell if this if each other can be o are over seriously over serious or not. Bowling, an easy way to see if I'm feeling you and if you're feeling me. If so, could we maintain control, maintain, or would I be tempted to leave a trail of kisses around your face leading to your lips? I was looking forward to the opportunity for conversations about anything. And then when it was your, your turn, I shamelessly view your body from behind. But should she, would she turn out to be a lush? In the bowling alley, drinking too much, lack a sense of humor or sportsmanship? I kind of doubt it, but I was looking forward. Hours beforehand, Imaginations ran rampant. What would you hear? What would I wear? How would I introduce myself? 
See, from my point of view, there's no need for me to see any, see all of your everything, just a suggestion of, of your parents. But our first date was brief. No exchange of flirtations, flirtatious text messages with an emoji or two after spending a few hours with you. You canceled, but I was looking forward. Chad, how much time I got? I just need water. I'm lying. <laughs> Chad, how much time I got? Let's give you, how about uh, five more for the, for the audience, for the people who came in late? Five more minutes? Or five more poems? Or does oh, that make you trouble? five more poems? Is that, oh too, is that Lord, bad? That's thing? a lot. How about three? I'm good. No, no, I'll go five. I'm All good. right. I'll go. Birthday wishes, a Christmas, Christmas gift, or the Happy New Year. Not to say that I don't care, but how would you know I'm your friend through thick and thin? How would you know how it feel in my heart and mind if I only acknowledge you once a year? Y'all want some more haikus? Y'all want some more haikus? We gotta go haikus. How y'all doing? Oh man, energy, energy, energy. Woo! Yeah, take off that Mets jersey. <laughs> oh, watch it now. <laughs> watch it now. Come oh. on now. Oh, snap. <laughs> I'm hey, Chad, Chad, mute him, Chad, mute him. Sign across my heart, stem from unfaithful women, thin ice, no skating. Masks are required. If not, take temperature, but thermometers. Had a date last night, was better than expected. Tonight, I'll try figs. If Doc, sa if the, if Doc said no mask, but he also say he also, bet he also said stay home. Why are you outside? Almost 52. Not know how much time left. Life becomes a death. Chad, what I got, baby? What I got? I'm just thumbing, thumbing through paper. I'm just, I'm buying time. Just do, do it. Do a, what's your closer? Come on, man. Your signature closer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I ain't ready for that. <laughs> yeah, ready for that. Um, let's go real quick. I'm, I'm gonna do like two or three more, okay, Chad? That sounds great. That work? I think that's great with everyone. Y'all good with that? Two or three more? I see the snaps. I see the snap. I can't see the. I see the snaps. I see the snaps. So here's Keep the thing. Keep on spitting. Keep on spitting. Here's the thing that I do. Um, my father passed away in 2010, November 5th, 2010. And when I did a show for him on his birthday, March 25th, um, 2011, what I did was change my shirts Hi, Janet. into his shirts throughout the night. So keep him in memory always. I always keep my, I always change my shirts in a set. Let's make this Christmas different. If you ask me, it needs to be in the midst of pandemic quarantine. A different type of holiday. Since some families are simply without dollar one. Ensnared, spending next year's monies on this year's gifts. That's why she and I decided to stay away from the bustle of people in search of a perfect gift. Still appreciating thought in mind that pa rum pa pum pum or whatever Christmas song that you miss. 
She asked that we make and exchange our gift list. Handed me a paper and it read this. Hang all the mistletoe. I'm gonna get to know you better. With a map to bedroom in which, was I, in which I was invited to enter, follow the rules. Open door no later than exactly eight. I'd come prepared. Flowers in head, hand, red shirt, elf hat, polka dot pocket square. She proceeded to, sweet, to whisper sweet nothings that she wanted me to hear. Proposition. To light, my, to light her bright lights to ecstasy, letting her internal jingle bells ring. We surrendered to each other. Fantasies intimate deeper, into deeper pleasures. The wandering movement of my hands under laced bra, unclipped to undress. This is our naughty or nice. The beauty of you smiling back Feel the smooth glide of my hands as they slip slide tracing into your inner thighs. I can sense the anticipation in your eyes. Searching for moisture and sound. Those moans that were made will set our pace. The pleasure of what we're experiencing shown on our faces. Into satisfying eyes. I enjoy the sweetest taste of her peppermint candies a gift that was once wrapped tightly until I was able to tongue tie her clitoris. Because this holiday, this one needs to be different. So ride my sleigh as we play reindeer games. You can hear heels against headboard as if I just landed upon the roof. Destined to deck all your walls with bowls of holly, love making and making love. All good times start and end. But by 10 p.m., we'd fall in bed and make love again. You bella out emphatically, oh yes, yes, yes. While, while requesting a simultaneous arrival. Boobs and nuts bouncing freely. Satisfaction in each other's eyes. To all a good night as a six o'clock alarm Never rings. Woo! What I got left, Chad? I thought you said you had two more. Oh, I got two more. So check this out. Uh, fun fact about that piece. There is actually... One, two, three. Three lines in that poem is from the song Daydream Believer by the Monkees. Because <laughs> the song is amazing. It's an amazing song. But if you listen to the words, it's really funky. Um, I'm hot. I'm hot. Check this out. The, here, here's the uh, funny. I'm very hot. The um, fun fact. Um, I forgot the fun fact. Let's go. <laughs> Can't remember. You said one more, two more? Two more. Lady, all I want, need and desire is five good minutes. You see this morning when we went our separate way, we parted without a goodbye kiss. No telephone call throughout the day, not even a text message with a well wish. Could it be that our daily routine is getting the best of us, slowly slipping away from what we want, need, desire and what I even prayed for. Because I recall being on bended knee petitioning, dear Lord, please allow me to let this woman into my heart without reservation. Because unlike relationships in my past, she is not the brunt of my frustration. Not one of the women that did me wrong, lying to my face, leaving me for another man, marrying again quicker than the ink could dry. But through our child's tribulations, ups and downs of frustrations, you're right there for me. Beautiful woman, you are my queen. Like the taste of a street strawberry, you have become my natural aphrodisiac, having sex my mind long before the thought of sex in my body. With you, I mean without you, 
I'll be lost in a whirlwind full of frustration, f fumbling with no direction. But lately, lately sometimes we're in the same room and there's no dialogue. It's just a stare, a body language asking, what are you doing here? Then again, it could be me, finally having a good woman by my side and thinking that the grass might be green on the other. So please, give me five good minutes, five quality, not quantity minutes. Because each week I sit in front of the TV, watching the last five minutes of the game, ignoring you and my chores at the same time, acting like the kids running back and forth aren't even mine. So here's my plan. On Monday, I want to know how your day was. Not only here, but listen to what's going on at work, making you do some of the things you don't normally do. And I can't expect everything to be done by you. So maybe one day when I get home early from work, I might start to prepare dinner. Draw you a bath, a glass of wine, with the sounds of Luther playing in the background. Now tell me, ladies, how does that sound? There will be days I'll make you laugh. There'll also be days I'll make you cry. But I will continue to try. Because like MJ said back in the day, I ain't never going to say goodbye. So on Friday, let's recreate our very first date. Come back home for some family time. Because our children, our children need five good minutes too. You see, five times five times five times five times five easily multiplies. So my dear, before we get distracted from what we got working between us, please, please give me five good minutes. I got one more up my sleeve. One more up my sleeve. <laughs> How y'all doing? Y'all good? Question. What makes a woman sexy? Is it just a gift or something attached to an alarm clock? Does sexy ever stop? You see, some women have a persona or a femininity with an exclamation mark of sensual sexuality. But my question to you is this. In what ways are you still Sexy. Haven't gone through life challenges, those dumbass boyfriends, the premature I love yous, the difficult marriage you might have went through. I'm telling you, lady, sexy ain't never left you. Years of pushing your babies in the carriage, being put in the same category, people assuming that same old story. That's just another welfare mother without a legit father. Walking the aisles in a grocery store trying to figure out how to stretch these dollars to buy you more. Yet if someone saw a man in public with his children doing what he's supposed to do, they want to give him more praise than you. You probably say screw him, because all he ever did was screw you over. See, sex is not about what you wear or how you walk and talk. Sex is about what's in your heart, what's in your mind, doing what you do to feed, clothes, nurse, back to health, being a parent in that part, but all of the time. Sexy never left. Never having a moment to sit back, relax, and unwind. Carrying your own load and other people asking you, well, can, 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 can you help take on mine? Sexy is that caliber woman that won't stand for less. The type of woman that takes pride in the parents of herself and her children. Sexy is your confidence and perfectly perfect for deserving man. I'm telling you, sexy ain't never left for you. Now, some would say and comment on the size of your chest or the shape of your behind, even with an extra pound or two. Sexy is cute. Sexy is so much still you. You see, sexy, sexy makes me want to perform magic from my fingertips against your skin to arouse in us to kiss and touch. Maybe love, desire, or passion takes over you and I. Sexy. Oh, it is what it is. But it has never, ever, thank you, Chad, stone soup, ever left you done. Keep those hands going. <laughs> Mr. Midnight, aka Philip Curtis. <laughs> give the cheer of your kids, give the thumbs up, do whatever you like. Oh, wow. <laughs> so... Philip is going to Ooh. hopefully put down Venmo or PayPal link in the comments and people can pay attention to that. And for those of you who are on the Stone website, I'll be putting it up there as well. 
Definitely send a few bucks his way. Uh, bucks Philip, do you have any uh, have current any, books uh, out? Current books out. I, I didn't hear you. I'm working on some. I have, I have books, that books that were good to sell, and, and open a, a venue that was open to the public. Blah blah blah. I'm working, I'm working on some other stuff, so I'll be back with that soon. Invite me. I'll try my best to make it here. Four hour delay that messes me up. I'm just getting home. For the most part, I told you, Chad, I didn't have to work today. Boom, they called me and I had to work. So that that kind of sucked. Um, the fun fact that I was going to say is that my office is actually, that's why I'm hot. My office is actually a closet. I, I took down the closet door and, and made the closet an office. So that's why I'm always hot. <laughs> I'm boy. I had to make a closet in my bedroom one time. That was an interesting first year at uh, South, in Boston. So however you can make it work. Exactly. <coughs> well, definitely put your PayPal. I'll put my information in the chat. Um, PayPal is pjcurtis00. I, I, pjcurtis00 at hotmail.com. That's my PayPal. But my. Um, um, one said, more time. You said uh, pjcurtis00. Uh, P, P. Philip J. Curtis. pjcurtis00 at hotmail.com. That's my PayPal. And my um, cash app and Venmo is Midnight Poet Zero Zero. Cash app and Venmo is Midnight Poet Zero Zero. Correct. And the and the uh, PayPal is uh, PJ Curtis Zero Zero at Hotmail dot com. Correct. Correct. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, you guys, I'm going to be putting that information in the chat, so no one has an ex excuse anymore. That's fantastic. Does the Cash App thing start with a dollar sign first instead of an at? Is that how that one works? I think I just signed up. I strongly minute. believe so. I think it's like a dollar sign, Midnight Poet Zero Zero, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. 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 So, yeah, Cash App's a little different that way. Yeah. All right. Well, Mr. Midnight, if you want to stay long enough for the open mic to finish and then do an encore, I think people would love that. Uh, oh, okay. I'll have a little we'll drink, drink, get some ice. Okay. By all means, and looks like we have a couple more people who are coming. We actually have people still coming on. It's pretty exciting. So we're going to start with uh, we're going to start with the first person I saw on come up on the um, on the uh, Zoom call. His name is Jim Dickney, and he'll have his turn. And uh, CC, Jake, make sure when you're not when no one's uh, when you're not talking to keep your your microphone on mute because that's the source of the echo. Sorry to say, that's why I've been muting you on randomly. But uh, as long as you're not talking, uh, as long as long as you're not talking, it's not a big deal. But uh, let's go to Mr. Stickney right now. Thanks, Chad. Um, really great uh, feature, Phil. R really something. <clears throat> my postmodern devil, my postmodern god. My postmodern devil appears to be hiding in the guise of a nice guy, always drops a dollar into the homeless man's waiting cup, tells the wife it's a nice dress, has something helpful to say no matter the train wreck. My postmodern god is definitely old school, sends planes into buildings because of abortion and homosexuals and no school prayer sends hurricanes into countries because of the sex habits of tourists. A real stickler, vintage fire and brimstone stuff. I suppose at some point, the devil will want all that brimstone, which per the existing documents are rightfully his back. Thanks. Thank you, John. And up next, I hope she's still here. We have so many people, I'm having a hard time finding everyone. Oh yes, there she is right here, uh, Miss Jane Spoken Word. Jane, are you ready? Ready, how you doing? Yeah, Phil, great. that was off the hook, man, thank you so much. So my piece is uh, gonna follow suit. It's called Bang Your Dead. What is wrong with people? Women and children are running in fear. 
from men so cruel and anger fueled, committing atrocities that bring us to tears, killing one another over man God rules, men in soldier suits with guns and tanks, and men with lies upon their lips as they drank <coughs> the bloody victories now. of now and when, men in fresh press suits making war pushing paper and pen. Didn't you hear what Marvin said? Mercy, mercy me, when will it end? In the cities they run past the bullets that fly. We're lost in the desert, they waste away and die of thirst. When ancient water jars are burst, where children are bought, fucked and worked till they're dead or they're grown, it's a planetary shame on you. It's all about skin tone. Cambodia, Rwanda, Sudan, Tibet, Brooklyn, Ferguson, Staten Island, the list goes on and on. Have you had enough yet? What is wrong with people? Oh, haven't you heard? The God has instructed them, they got the word, to reap the rewards, you must kill the infidels, blow them off the face of the earth, and send them all to hell. And for all you fine people who love the preacher, but hate the sin, spinning from your, from your pul pulpit, spewing lies from deep within of hate and intolerance, Though Jesus loves you nonetheless, you think you're on the highway to heaven because your sins in the dark you did confess? In the name of a Muslim jihad or a Bible-thumping Christian crusade, as long as it's your version of God, then you're happy, regardless of the mess that you made in your God's name the wrath of God, an eye for an eye, millions of dead motherfuckers just the same. I rely on a line I believe that George Carlin said, do you believe in God? Answer yes, then please do move ahead. Do you believe in my God? Answer no then bang, you're dead. Thank you very much, Jane. That was great. And we're going to move over now to uh, someone who's been working tirelessly in New York, um, working the polls, the voting, doing all behind the voting and that stuff, and uh, probably having to deal with all the protesters saying, no president ever lo lost, <laughs> no Ohio and Florida and won the presidency. But uh, at any rate, let us have, let's have uh, Patricia Kerrigan up next. Okay. Oops, I muted you by, by accident. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. You can unmute yourself again. Patricia, I'm going to read something political then. Cool. <laughs> okay. The Trapper and the Furia, inspired by Regina Spector. 2020, a strange, strange year, like a time bomb waiting for breaking news to strike. Beasts in filthy cages, pellets and food, Pets from puppy mills, children sleep in soiled cages, family separation, asylum still out of reach, dystopian predictions, dystopian facts, big business declares war on its workers, unions, wages, health care, live at triage, news speak from the White House, twists, failures into praise, fiction into history, our self-proclaimed leader plays mobster roulette, the press, elections and laws, face execution. He gives carte blanche to an alien dressed as a flu. 
and the sick keep getting sicker with too many fevers, chills, coughs, and losses of smell and taste. Death toll rising, ghost towns replace cities, bodies overflow, morgues, the homeless live underground. Tests and cures not fast enough, business as usual for corporate generals. 2020, a strange, strange year. People shut in doors, waiting, not knowing what to believe. They're time bombs, not knowing when to explode. Thank you. I got the fire from Jane. Keep it going. Let's pass that torch. Thank you, Patricia. And let's go on now to uh, someone Thank you, brand Phil. New. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you, Phil. And uh, let's go up to a uh, man who calls himself on the uh, on the Zoom call, Black Glitter. He uh, he was one of the first to join up from the out of town crowd, and I, I love the out of town crowd. I love your energy you're bringing to us tonight. I love anyone any one of you who decides you. to participate in the open mic. So, Mr. Mr. B, Mr. G, let's um, let's have you get started. All right, so um, I actually know Midnight, and this is a poem inspired by a conversation that we had when I, I asked him the question, uh, what do you want people to remember you by when you die? And uh, when you die, you know, and so um, we talked about that. Then I asked myself the question, what, what do I want people to remember me as when I die? So. This was inspired by that uh, by that question and the conversation. And so I'm gonna share this piece. Death is a certainty. So relax, it will all be over soon. Doomed to consume shit, work and watch cartoons only to return to dust. Ashes to ashes, we all fall victim to the worst part of ourselves. Compelled by greed, it seems we'll do almost anything to so-called succeed. Cars rust, money turns to dust, our friends we no longer can trust. Death has revealed the magicians behind the curtain. Now I'm certain of only one thing. When I return to dust, remember me as black glitter, the black diamond that reflected the best and worst this planet had to offer. Remember me as the light that glistened in the dark as the spark of imagination. Remember looking into my eyes and knowing hope. Remember me as a beadsmith to the end. I'm not perfect, I won't pretend. I know my life is doomed to end, but I hope I will see you again. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Hope you come back. We meet every Wednesday night from from uh, seven to it's from eight to from uh, eight, from seven to uh, nine generally. We change it around during holidays, and I'm hoping we do something holiday related. I've got a couple of requests for people who want us to do something holiday related, and depends on how close I can do it. Right now, I'm talking to my family, so it looks like I might be staying home exclusively for the holidays, won't even be visiting any of my parents with distance. We're a little bit worried now, so we'll see what happens. I'm gonna have to fill up that time somehow and I'd like it to be with you guys, but let's see what happens. But um, moving on to more important things, let's get to the open mic list. Um, I'm joining four, I think four people on a single call. So even though I'm unmuting uh, Carol Weston's herself, I'm actually unmuting two other friends, Janet Cormier and Laurel Lambert. We're gonna hear first from Carol Weston, who is a longstanding figure in the poetry scene. And uh, there's been talk about getting some of her work collected, but more on that at another time. For now, I'm gonna make sure she gets unmuted. And let's bring up next, Carol Weston. Hi, hi. hi Carol. Um, inside an aging mortal's skin, inside an aging mortal's skin, I am arthritic. Come over here and listen to my bones. 
How can I stand up straight to wrap my arms around the hundred million mile diameter of the sun? Uh, let me see. Okay, this is Ireland. Uh, white horse, what in your wild heart presses your muzzle to the window? It is 10 p.m. and light as day in Connemara, Ireland. For seven years, the old woman almost never had a visitor. White horse, you look in upon us to see Mary, sudden visitor from America. We drink our tea with you. Thank you. Yeah! Okay. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening to that. And uh, thanks for having patience for me as I work on the phone crowd. And let's welcome next uh, up on the open mic, Mr. John Wesick. Thanks, Chad. Um, here's uh, one from my uh, latest book of travel poems, A Foreigner, Wherever I Go. Uh, and, you know, we were in Santiago eating at this outdoor cafe and a homeless guy walked up to a nearby table, grabbed the guy's beer right off the table and guzzled as fast as he could before uh, running off. So this is uh, Santiago's notorious beer thief. Elite detectives examine empty mugs for clues while the city lives in fear. It's mayor pleading for reinforcements. Citizens cower behind locked doors. Those who brave the night find llamas in bulletproof vests. Stray dogs with police radios, roadblocks, ID checks, armed guards at restaurants. Who is he? When will he strike again? At the outdoor cafe, you only looked away for an instant. Then automatic weapons fire, smell of cordite, bearded man in dirty clothes, wiping his lips, running, dodging a fusillade of bullets. You stare open mouth, your glass empty. Thank you so much, John. We're going to switch over to next person on the open mic, and that would be Mr. Bill Lewis. Let me see if I can find him on the list, see if he didn't jump. He did not. So, Mr. Bill, you're up. Well, indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it is a surprise and a pleasure to be here. I have no idea what I want to do now. I was thinking of something calm and silly or maybe something obnoxious and sexy, but um, I don't know, after midnight, man. Whew. I went this morning to a meeting in Eldoret. I don't suppose you know where Eldoret is, but it's right on the Rift Valley. It's just on the bottom, it's just out of you. If you go out of Nairobi and you head for Lake Victoria, although Lake Uganda now, depending on who you ask, there's a huge scarf there in the, and it goes down. That is the Great Rift Valley. And so I went there. We were having a Toastmasters meeting. I got to be with people. It was so exciting just to meet, you know, Kenyans, other Kenyans. As you know, I taught high school. There's my high school. Isn't it beautiful? I loved it there. I was doing what I wanted to do, work with kids, teach, build a better world. All we could think of in my day. Remember JFK? And what did he say constantly again? A better world is possibly. He drove us forward. He said that we were the ones who could do it. We are the generation. We are the best and the brightest. It is up to us to build the better world that we want. We went forward across the world to bring education and knowledge and connections. The more you know people, the less you want to go to war with them. I thought, I thought.
The soldiers slaughtered my students. 3,000 of them, you know, they took them out to primary school outside of Garissa and let them die. I don't know why. It was after I left 10 years later and I just saw it in the paper. They hid it, of course, for a decade. Why do we kill each other? We're the same color. I can't even tell one from another who is a killer and who is a killed. And yet, I still love my Kenya. I still love Somalia. I still love Ethiopia. My people, this is where I live. These are my neighbors. And they loved me. Thank you, Bill. I'm going to move on to uh, ah, our other uh, person on our separate phone line. And I'm going to ask her to press star six to unmute herself, Miss Nancy Dotson. Winter. Snowflakes peep behind my window. The wind blows against my face. Cold presents per penetrates the body. Winter, go away. The freezing rain creates a skating rink. Watch out or you will fall. No bumps along the nose or knees, please. Just skate along with me. Why the wind, Lord? Why the hail and cold? My breath escapes in mist. I submit myself to thee. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. And we're going now to uh, Kim Company, who I'm hoping is still here and still able to join us. Uh-oh, looks like she had left us, so we'll have to see her next time unless she is elsewhere and it doesn't seem like she is. If there's anyone else who wants to be on the open mic, we do have some spots, we have some time. Yeah, hello? Oh, wait one second. Um, I'm going to go bring us now to, uh, we have uh, we have Laura Lambert, Janet Cormier coming up, but let's uh, bring up next Mr. Cecia Chagra. Okay. Um, guys, guys. Yeah, mi uh, midnight, Laurel, thank you. Shut up. <laughs> You're still on, uh, Chad. I'm still here, thank you. Sorry, one second. Thank you. That was a good shut up, Chad, though. It was good. <laughs> Can work that into a poem. Um, there's so much hatred and division, and uh, we need to watch the energy of our justified hatred because that shit can turn around. This was written in 99, first performed at Stone Soup on a guitar when I played every now and again. I'm going to read a lyric. Freedom. Oh, you're not even worth a blurb in the paper or a sound bite on your TV set. The day came and went and nobody noticed freedom of speech disappear. Quick as need and as painless as fear, taking decades to consume our eyes and our ears till suppressing momentum of a social outcry became corporate sciences pressed into headlines, appearing on TV, then washed with commercials, then the weather and the financial quotes. No, that was not enough. No, we still had our voices. Then the art schools and top schools fell under control. So you're on a career track, in debt, out of college, but must you bleed freedom to do what you're told? Corporate's too big, and entities have more rights than you, and guess who owns who you voted for? Electing a human? You're lost at a punchline. Left, right, right, left, money wins. And the news became soap opera, sports became business, and life a programming sales chart. And that's how we're fed, all of the masses. Media became our IV drip. 
Drip. Drip. Oh, I wish artists could say. But that's entertainment now. And the joke is on you and free speech. We're told, don't see yourselves, but all selfish and greedy. Maybe we should all live inside Warhol's cans. We buy it and sell it, destroy Mother Nature, and killing for oil is okay. And entities steal your dreams. Bottom lines have their own rules. Only one news event at a time. True behavior? That's passe. Accountability? No way. Saturate them with important junk. And we consume it. Believe it. God is greed. Trickle down this. Suck each cottage industry dry. Speak out, and you're labeled an anti-American with not even a blurb or soundbite. You're not even worth a blurb in the paper or a soundbite on your TV set. The day came and went, and nobody noticed. Thank you, Midnight. <laughs> Thank you back. Thank you back. Apologies for my outburst earlier. I'm going to uh, bring the mic over to uh, someone who's on the call right now uh, via phone only. Then we have a couple other people. One, I want two people by the phone, and then one, uh, two people on video. The first person is going to be, and I'm unmuting them right now. And it's uh, Laurel Lambert, who hasn't seen, been with us for a while. And uh, she's now able to, uh, I think we'll be able to hear her. And if she wants to, she can read her poems right now. Laurel, are you up? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. First and foremost, I would like to apologize to the Stone Soup community for my past behavior. It's, it's okay. It's okay, Laurel. We just want to hear the poem. We just want to hear the poem. Okay. I was walking. I was walking blindfolded. I was alone. I had brown moccasins on my feet. I felt the earth beneath me. It grounded me. I stand alone, though. It seems to me that the sky is falling from the sky. I really just God's dream. I stand alone. I see a tree. I love trees. I used to have the courage to hug trees. I'm broken now. But piece by piece, I'm pulling myself back together. I walk alone. Brown moccasins on my feet. I feel the earth beneath my feet. Pat, can I do two more? Yes. This one is called a song. In the morning, I wake up early, real, real early. And I turn on Jellicent Airplane, an acid walker from the 60s. It's great. Music. Music is in the soul. Music is in the heart. Music is in the mind. Music is in the spirit. I caught that song. It's called Ladder. Take a little bit of it. Ladder was 30 years old today. They took away all of his toys. Just that little barb. If you want, you can Google it. It's on the worst of Jenison airplane 
And the name of the song is Lather. L A T H E R. And my last poem, the third one, goes like the. That means a real, real lot to me, even though I haven't written it down yet. No more do I cry. No more do I scream. No more do I weep. My shoulders are back and my head is high. Once again, I have the brown moccasins on my feet. They make me feel grounded. Alone, alone, alone. Do you care to join me? Or am I forever going to be flying into my pillow? And the dance goes on, and the sun exploded in my face, and the sun splintered in my face. And now I know. But I'm going to end this and get to one really quick one that Carol likes. Butterfly, butterfly, burning bright. Where will you sleep tonight? Oh, I'm an oak, oak leaf, my friend. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Laurel. And I'm going to bring the last person up on the uh, phone open mic. Um, she's a columnist. She's one of the, there's actually uh, three columnists for Oddball Magazine, a place where I work on tonight. We've never had more than one or two. And tonight we have three. Uh, the, this person actually does a poem, a, a poem column every Friday morning at 11 o'clock without fail. The name of the column is uh, Bamboozled No More. And uh, let's bring on to the open mic Zoom for the first time, Janet Cormier. Hey, Tom. Oh, Janet, I don't know if you're on speaker or not, but hold the phone to your, hold the phone closer to you because we can't hear you. Is this better? Much. Oh, okay. Thank you. I am tech unsavvy. Um, first poem is, um, well, first up, good night. Hello, and everything else. Now, the first poem is Let Her Be. Let her be the stars, the moon, the air, the clouds. Let her be the tree, the soil, the rain. Let her dance, think out loud, and step quietly. But for God's sake, let her be. Next poem, very short, it's called Die. I am in awe how, I'm sorry, let me start over. I am in awe how such a small frame of a man can house so much anger. The next one is Quagmire. Good enough to work with as a client or hire just not good enough to work for. Good enough to live in the same neighborhood, just not good enough to live next door. Good enough to care for your genius kids, just not good enough to have kids who are geniuses. Good enough to fantasize about, but not just good enough to vote for. And my final one, is called Urban Medusa. She was wearing everyone's hair, blonde, gray, brown, red, black, twisted, braided, locked, unlocked, curled, straight, shelled, beaded, trimmed in ribbons and bows, bells, chimes, and whistles. She was wearing everyone's hair and a Mona Lisa smile. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Janet. And that concludes our phone group for tonight, but uh, I'm sure there'll be others who will be trying to join in next time. Um, let's see. Let's bring up next uh, one of our, another one of our newcomers to the open mic, Sandy Shakes. 
Ah, there you are. Oh, there. Hello. Okay, here I am. All right, I'm going to do one piece that's called layers. Here we go. My mother used layers of pasta, carefully boiled, so that they would not stick to the past lives the water tried to drown them in. Sometimes I felt that my mother envied food that could transform in ways her Catholic upbringing would never forgive. On lasagna days, there was a warm buzz around all the teenagers in that household. My brothers and I inhaled the promise of that evening's gift. My mother wrapped each layer with the protection of heavy meat, as if she suspected the pasta would run away with the cheese. She was a woman of routine, not by choice, but because the numbing of immobile things sang her anxiety to sleep. At the dinner table in front of lasagna, I finally proved I could keep up with my brothers. I was proud to put away more servings than men twice my weight. It was not a contest but a scientific fact that I had a bigger emotional void to fill. Hugs were not practiced at that address, but lasagna days made my insides feel cuddled and safe. As loud as our family was, there was a symphony of silence at that table when our mouths burned in delicious synchronicity. We could have been extras in old Italian movies, except we carried no emotional beef in our spirits. At dinner time, we closely resembled the layers presented to us on our eager plates. So many ingredients from different origins, boiled, blended, smashed into surroundings too small for any one flavor to really be savored. We were damaged layers, but we used to sit well together. Once upon a warm orange glow, before our recipe was discarded and each of our ingredients torn from the cookbook's pages. My mother's lasagna used to be a peace treaty. Now it is just a memory and her empty pans resemble war-torn buildings. One day, I will walk into an Italian restaurant and reserve seating for seven. I'll collect seven unknown hungry souls and close my eyes and arrive on lasagna day. Thank you. Thank you so much. And to anyone who's coming here for the first time, uh, Stone Soup Poetry meets every week online now from 7 to 9. And you can get the connections at uh, the Stone Soup Poetry Facebook group, which is very easy to find, or via my page, uh, via Chad Parento, or you can look up uh, stonesouppoetry.blogspot.com for future information. We'd love to have you and uh, keep on having you. Up next is the editor and publisher of Oddball Magazine. He has uh, been starting, he started the Oddball Foundation in the midst of the pandemic, was actually able to get it going. And since then he and others have been starting a uh, variety of workshops from the Future No Future series. The next one's gonna be coming up, uh, I believe this uh, coming Monday. And uh, he can tell you all about it, or I hope he will if he unmutes himself and and there he is. Let's welcome up. Um, you can check his check out his column, his poem column every Tuesday afternoon at 1 p.m. Mr. Jason Wright. Hey everybody, how's it going? Hey, hey good to see you, Chad. Um, yeah, wow, what a fantastic turnout today, Chad. Holy, holy crap. Um, so yeah, uh, next Monday, Liza Zayas will be leading um, her uh, free workshop with Future No Future called The Pendulum. Uh, we had a, uh, John Wessick it was here actually. Chad, can you unmute John Wessick so he can talk about the, the workshop oh, real quick? I'll unmute myself, how about that? Oh, there you go. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> oh, uh, John, how was the workshop last week? You want you- Well, that was, that was kind of fun. I, you know, I just kind of walked into it uh, maybe 20 minutes later or something and I got hit with this uh, Josh Carwin's insane uh, sense <laughs> uh, plans. And so, I don't know, I grabbed four books off the shelf and was, you know, reading like mad, just trying to, trying to put poems together or something on the fly. Uh, you, you guys recorded that, I assume we're going to write that. Yeah, it's, it's on our YouTube yeah. channel and it's matriculating on the internet somewhere. All over you can go to YouTube. the YouTube channel and watch me make a fool out of myself, but you know, it's entertaining. And, and, and uh, a couple other people too. It was really a fun time and it was a free event. 
and we're really glad that you could could come. Uh, so next Monday, um, you know, and Chad's gonna be leading one as well. Two uh, V. I can make a fool out of myself in half the time. You guys can. <laughs> no, right? okay, Chad, it'll be a contest. Chad's is gonna be awesome. I can't wait for that one. Um, I, I don't know what it's gonna be, but I'm really. I win all anti-popularity contests, yeah. but uh, let's hear all your right, poems, here we go. Sir. Uh, so this is my uh, uh, poem from today. Today's, no, from yesterday. Jagged Thought 349, Delicate. Drive, you know I got it. When I look at my watch, workaholic, I got $2 in my wallet, one for you if you need it, both really. Money won't defeat me, don't let it defeat you. I've never had much, just enough for what I need. I don't need much, just some air to breathe. I don't need much, just some books to read. I don't need much, just for you to leave me. I don't need much, just a second to think. I don't need much, just some love and deliverance. Something other than medications to medicate my thinking. Something other than bruises to remember the weekend. Something other than laughter. I feel like I need a moment. A vocation for someone is a reason to keep going. An ocean without a boat is still an ocean. A kickstart motor still needs oil. And you, you gotta keep moving and we will get there. Maybe after the bars close, maybe after the stop signs go, Maybe after the World War wind blows, but we will get there. Just keep moving, soldier. We are in this together. Thank you very much, Jason. Thank you, Chad. Great open mic today. Thank you. We have a couple more people to go. There's another. There's one more person, to my knowledge, only one more person who uh, wanted to be part of the open mic experience. If there's anyone who's saying, hey, then change my mind, but... Um, Let's see, there was a G Money, I believe that was his, yes, there was a G Money or at G Money, according to his, uh, his, uh, <laughs> his um, Zoom name, and I think he just unmuted himself. I don't know if he can video, uh, or they can video themselves. I actually don't know if this is a he or a she, or they, them, I have no idea. But identify yourself, and by all means, welcome to the open mic. Hey, Chad, thank you, group. This is my oh, first are. stone soup, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this poem is uh, it's angry by title and by verse. Another nigga got ripped yesterday. You read through the newspaper. What does it say? He was running, shot him in his back. Now he's gone away. A-N-G-R-Y. This is our anthem, this is our cry. But why are we angry? It happens all the time. It happens for no reason, it happens with no rhyme. A-N-G-R-Y, deep into your soul. Once you let it go, the anger takes control. So, ain't nobody gonna rescue you, A-N-G-R-Y. This is my angry cry, for this is ours, and there's no least, there's no release for the lie. But I'm not angry. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just gonna say the same thing. I'll uh, I told I told uh, Sandy and then, um, as well as a black glitter and what I told Philip Curtis all those months ago when we were just starting out. Please come back. We'd love to hear you again as much as you can, as much as you can make it back. I know everyone's schedules are all hell nowadays, but for as long as we keep this going, we'd love to hear from you. And up next on the open mic, huh, I'm doing this by request. We have uh, we're gonna we're gonna end off with uh, Mr. Ethan Mackler. And oh wait a second, oh okay, we're gonna end off with Mr. Ethan Mackler and uh, James Van Loy. But I actually got a request um, from CCR Shocker and several others that they wanted me to read my own work. So I am going to, just only by request. If anyone wants to stop me, they can. But I do a series of uh, poems every week. I've published every Friday morning now called Stone Soup Croutons. And basically what I do is every week I take Informate, I take footage from the open mic, not so much footage, but words from the open mic, impressions, ideas, phrases, and what have you, and ideas, and I create um, my own poem at the end of the week. It's a monoglum, it's a combination of pastiche, 
of thoughts and reflection to the open mic. And I do this every, I've been doing this every week without fail. Well, maybe some fail, but at least I get it up on time. And it's usually on time between, usually by on time, I usually mean between 8 and 8.30 in the morning. It's on my own blog, uh, which you can access via my website at chadparentopoetforhire.com. And last week we had an amazing feature with Tony Brown, the poet and uh, musician poet, Tony Brown. Uh, if you want to know more about him, you can check out the Stone Soup website at stonesouppoetry.blogspot.com. He has his own Patreon. He has a band that he performs poetry in front of, which is pretty amazing. And it was a very, very heavy open mic, especially in the fact that it was um, after this previous Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving is a pretty heavy holiday for Mr. Brown anyway. So this is, but for some reason I turned it into a morning work poem just because I work with a lot of, well, this one's called Thursday Morning. Spin and be own tornado. If also own gun, then are morning acts on self considered suicide? Your cog-like contortions turn to muscle memory, grinding bones away, less nervous system than a yam. Sterilized work corner anticipates inevitable transition. You could conquer world if you could only break wind. Sprostbite moonlights on toes, cripples faster than student debt, makes eyes droop all the way down to the third shift. Vendors dressed as magicians take desk and chair, Grab rib from cage to create perfect annoying coworker. Can temporary memorial go up before someone's gone? Why is name and date engraved in Comic Sans? From behind, salt is thrown over on-duty footsteps. They repeat social justice, start your trail of tears. Move five o'clock body between family's shame and the friends you can never bring home. Only redemption left in own hands, left only to clutch each other. And with that, thank you. And with that, let's bring us to the man who I am proud to call the Pulse of Stone Soup. He's really the Pulse of Boston. You can, you can see him play anywhere, whether it's a poetry open mic or doing background music for the Boston's Wicked Ladies of Wrestling. Look it up, it's an amazing site, he's, he's on there. Let's welcome up Mr. Ethan Mackler. Thank you, Chad. This is a piece without any words that cleanse the palate of the things we have heard. Nothing to shout, sing, or say for this fine evening with Curtis Philip J. <laughs> Thank you. 
back to you, Chad. Thank you, Ethan. And with that, with that, we're going to bring us to the person we call our penultimate closer. Before I called our penultimate closer, uh, Bill Barnum. Bill Barnum uh, passed away a year, over a year ago. He was the uh, mine troubadour of Boston and a local legend. You should look up Bill Barnum online and even on YouTube. So much of him survives as uh, raw footage from various open mics filmed around Boston and Cambridge and elsewhere. This man who's coming up next was not only a friend of Bill Barnum's, but also a co-performer with the Cosmic Spelunker Theater. And in his own right, he is a poet, mime, performer, and activist, and our, our third and final oddball columnist of the evening. You can check out his column tomorrow, in fact. It's All One Thing is his weekly poem column where he covers everything in poetry, anecdotes, political fact, mime, commentary, and song. He does it all together. This person's got a lot of wisdom behind his years of existence here in Boston, and he puts it to good use every week. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you Mr. James Van Loy. Please, Chad. So uh, I've got this poem here, and it has a little, little quotation from Marshall McLuhan that goes before it. It's called Your Government. Nose counting, a cherished part of the 18th century fragmentation process, has rapidly become a cumbersome and ineffectual form of social assessment in an environment of instant electric speeds. The public, in the sense of a great consensus of separate and distinct viewpoints, is finished. Today, the mass audience, the successor to the public, can be used as a creative participating force. It is instead merely given packages of passive entertainment. And here's my piece called The Next Iteration. They keep saying how divided we are. Never has there been such a partisan divide as if we never had a civil war that killed over 600,000 people south rising up against north and splitting the old party lines into new formation. But what they refuse to even mention, much less talk about, is the vast disinformation, really propaganda campaign deployed my entire lifetime in Madison Avenue ads, but then ramped up in the 1970s to paroxysms of Chamber of Congress and manufacturers organizations, combined with gobs of billionaire billions to buy politicians made legal in 1976 and 78 by Supreme Court Supreme saying money is speech and put out a flood of lies to upend official reports and scientific consensus process and create a debate about established fact and sullage and deform any vestige of the truth that might survive the information war come culture war that has left us unable to even talk to those people, family members, friends, even lovers and close confidants. So we can only wonder how how does it so finally come to this ugly, awful place when it's all been done with such technical skill, such public relations panache, such consummate professional standards of production and display? And I have a little, little short song. <clears throat> Keep your lamp trimmed and burning. Keep your lamp trimmed and burning. Keep your lamp trimmed and burning. The time is drawing nigh. Oh, when the stars fall from the sky. Oh, when the stars 
fall from the sky. Oh, when the stars fall from the sky. Oh, the time is drawing nigh. Oh, the time is drawing nigh. And of course, that is African American spiritual that was sung often as part of the uh, Underground Railroad to send messages to people uh, and to keep them in contact with each other as they attempted escape from slavery. Thank you very much, James. James. And the, the actual, actual closer, closer, the final closer, the final closer will, will be will be midnight, midnight himself, himself coming back midnight for just for one more. One more. He's got one more good one in him, and he's got more than one. But you know, he's got to go to bed. He's got jobs tomorrow, like we all do. So it's, it's still barely seven o'clock. Oh, that's right. Got time difference from where you are. So let's hear it from midnight one more time. Hey Chad, thank, thank you again. So let's hear it from midnight one more time. We had we hit it. Thank you very much. Um, Let's go. Uh, let me think. Quick haiku and a piece, okay? Okay. Midnight funeral. Bow heads in remembrance. Poetry service. Um. I want to thank you all for coming because the only thing that a poem wants is to be heard. But I dare you to listen, pay more than the usual attention, become the intervention that can help teach our adolescents. You see, some of our teenagers have gone astray. Internally, they feel a certain way. Confusion meets depression. I heard it's been said that absent fathers still teach vital lessons. And bullying gives you the personal view that you're less desirable, a powerless individual. Teens succumb to sex, drugs, and drinking, give away to su 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 suicidal thinking. And that, that's just the beginning. Rap lyrics are winning. Clip in the nine, gotta get mine, replacing real dreams with the dreams of selling drugs. Being put in the street life at 13, not sure if you live to see the age of 14. And parents, some parents aren't even parenting because they too are still children. So I dare you to listen to the boys that buy pants that don't fit so that they can fit in. To the children that have the delusion that it's cute to wear high heels, tight jeans, and makeup. Little girls that envy adult women, underestimating the power of flirtation. In the meantime, you have grown men that want to fulfill these desires when these desires become fertile, it gives birth to sin. But we can still teach our children, even when they're not listening, hoping one day they will remember, instill in them self-esteem, morality, and life's realities. Teach them spirituality that can be passed on from generation to generation after generation. Again, I wanna thank you all for coming because the only thing that a poem wants is to be heard. But I dare you, I dare you, I dare you to listen. Shout out to all my friends that are in California, back east that came out and supported, Sandy Shakes, Ebony, Minnesota's in the building. New York is always here for me. Yeah, um, Glitter, that's, Glitter, hey, hey, Glitter made, made, made these, these um, um, Bracelets that, that I wear. And shout out to David Ramos, Ramos. A, a feature tonight as well. Thank you again. Yeah, midnight. Yep. Yay. Thank you very, thank you very much. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Everybody, Everybody was great. Great tonight. In the spirit, James, in the spirit of what you shared, the Smith Mund Act. <laughs>
I don't know, I've typed it in there. I don't know if anybody knows it, but it was recently changed over to the Smith Month Modernization Act, but basically legalized propaganda against us. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I don't know, a lot of people don't know about that. That's a big one. Put that in some poems and kick it out there. That shit's legal. <laughs> Thank you, Cece. Thank you, I, want to, I want to leave off, want to leave with, off with a reminder, a reminder that, that anyone who uh, wants to donate to towards um, Phil's, Philip's uh, AK Midnight's performance tonight uh, to please, there's, I pasted numerous times over the chat. If you want to save the chat, you can do that, but I'll also be posting this on the Stone Soup website. Some of you who know him before probably have this information, but his Cash App and Venmo are Midnight Poet uh, double zero. His PayPal is uh, pjcurtis00 at hotmail.com. And I will be reposting this information on the Stone Soup uh, Facebook page. If you're interested in joining that, please do so. Uh, all you have to do is look up Stone Soup Poetry and it's uh, very easy to find. And we update with uh, contest submission opportunities. And there are, of course, submission opportunities at oddballmagazine.com. So any of you aspiring poets, please send your work in. We're publishing as much as we can at a breakneck pace. We can't get to everybody, but uh, hopefully in the new year, we're gonna catch up and um, feature more new voices than ever. There's at least a new poet going up every week now and a new artist coming up every month. And we want to take it, keep on taking advantage of that and submissions like yours will help. And with that, hopefully I'll have an announcement for next week's feature very soon. I wanna thank everyone for coming. This is where we do our obligatory wave to wave goodbye so, um, so I can catch it on our screen later on. And thanks to everyone who, who if you turned on your video and did the thing, did the wave, just to do the wave, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, more announcements will come. Check out the Facebook page, check out my website, check out uh, stonesuperoetry.blogspot.com, bare minimum. More information will be showing up there. Thanks to everyone who showed up tonight and we will see you all very short soon, I hope. Take care of yourself, take care of someone else if you can and keep safe and we'll see you all if not next week, hopefully in 2021. Good night.